What? I just... What's on my bar? What? I just got this looking nice. I just got it looking nice. I wanted to stay that way. I hope I don't spill anything. <laughs> Right, this is part three of my look at canned cocktails now parts one and two were about canned old fashions and canned margaritas i think they're probably two of the largest segments of the canned cocktail marketplace but then there's a lot of other canned cocktails that we found that weren't we didn't have like multiple examples of and we thought it'd be really fun to have them just put into glasses and see if i can guess what the heck cocktail this is trying to be today on how to drink what the fuck am i drinking and in case you're wondering uh, I can't see what Meredith's doing. There's a huge curtain over there separating the bar. Here it comes. Here it comes. This is Mellow Yellow. What in the shit? Oh, f this is going to be crazy. <laughs> it looks like Mellow Yellow. Not Mountain Dew. That's Mellow Yellow. I know the difference. Ooh. It smells like the paint store. That's not a good sign. I don't know what the hell this is, but it's something. I mean, I think it's a yuzu something or other. There's a maltiness to this that makes me wonder if this is actually not even a canned cocktail, but actually a canned like a hard seltzer that's like a malt drink or something like that. It, it tastes a little wet, like it's a, there's a lot more, it's carbonated first off, and it tastes like there's more seltzer in this and you want this more concentrated. The flavors are thin and lemony and what the hell is it, Meredith? Bring in the can. I thought we were starting with an easy one. To Sand be in the like... can. Oh, it's a mimosa. That's interesting. And this is so funny about how expectations work because now that I say that, yeah, it does kind of taste like a mimosa. One time, I was at my friend's house for Thanksgiving. I had a slice of cheesecake and I had one bite of that cheesecake and I almost threw up. I said, oh my God, I didn't know this, but the cheesecake's gone bad. It's soured. Nobody drink the beer. The beer has gone bad. And my friend said, well, it's key lime pie. I took another bite. I was like, this is a delicious key lime pie. And that's true. That is a true story. And I, I it was really instructive to me. I, like I had a, 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 it was like an epiphany moment where I realized, oh wow, your expectations of what you're about to eat is huge. So I thought this was like a, sh a shitty kind of yuzu carbonated beverage. It's actually Oza, premium sparkling wine and real juice, classic mimosa. All right, bring in the next whatever the hell this is. What is this? What do we got here? We got something a little less mellow, less mellow yellow. This color feels less artificial to me. Still bubbling. Oh, oh wow, that's a, that's a something, that's a mule immediately. You can tell right away from the nose. That's gingery as hell. That is a dark and stormy. <laughs> Ah, I got it right. <laughs> oh, it's the Gosling's Dark and Stormy. Hell yeah, man. Perfect. Next. Okay, here comes the next drink. We should have like a little conveyor belt. This could have been cooler. I'm allowed to use anything I want to identify this. This presents visually as a Negroni. It smells like Campari. That's a Negroni, but one that I don't like. Oh, oh God. There's like some notes in there that taste like a, um, the, the incense at like a, a magic shop, but I don't mean a magic shop like where you buy magic tricks. I mean a magic shop when you're like a goth kid and you're going to an occult store to like buy spell books and stuff. It's the taste of goth, like of confused goth child in Philadelphia. It is a Negroni, I was correct. Oh, this is, oh man. St. Agrestus, they have an Amaro. I remember Aster Wines was in love with and I bought a bottle and I had, I hate it so much. It's not, it's nothing personal. It's because it tastes like this. <laughs> and, um, and I just thought it was like really um, just pungent, not and in a way that personally I recognize it as a good amaro that a lot of people are going to enjoy. Obviously, they have this product here. This is somebody's thing. For me, it's just too incensey. I don't know how else to describe it. It's very incensey. So next, I'm not into this one. Okay, here it comes. Oh man, what is this? It's in a highball. It's frothy. It's got a foamy head here. Quickly dissipating. It's a bubbler. Oh boy. Tastes like oranges and cucumber? Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a some kind of an orange cucumber fruit punch. Oh, is this trying to be a mojito? Maybe this is an attempted mojito. What is it? This is a passion fruit caipirinha. Huh. Huh. Well, I'm not getting big passion fruit from it. I'd say it's a it's a subtle passion fruit to the extent that it's in there. Lime juice, passion fruit juice, vanilla flavor. Oh yeah, cardamom extract. I'm getting a lot of cardamom. Seeing that name put to that immediately triggers in my brain. And lemongrass oil. Always oh, the lemongrass oil. It's growing on me. I'm not sure I'm always gonna be in the mood for a passion fruit caperinia from Drifter, but I don't hate it. Oh look, wine from Bright Cellars. 
Oh, you know why I love Bright Cellars? You know what Bright Cellars is, right, folks? Bright Cellars is the guys with the wine. And I like the wine. Let me give you some talking points. No, I got you. I got this. Okay. Don't give me shit. Okay. I got it. Here it goes. Look, you love wine, right? I love wine. Do you like to shop for wine? No. Shopping for wine is boring. You have to leave your house and interact with humanity to try to pick this one from that one. And do you know about the wine? I don't know about the wine. You don't have to shop for the wine. You can just take the link in the pinned comment below, swing over to Bright Cellars, and answer seven easy questions on a very simple quiz that they feed into their super advanced, artificially intelligent wine computer. And then they take that information and they pair you up with some of the best wines in the country that they think you're gonna love. And they're generally right. Meredith, the card's your favorite part of the wine? My favorite part of the wine. The cards, like this is a great name for a wine. This is called Dead Stars and Black Holes. I'm gonna drink that today. It tells you where it was grown, tells you what kind of wine it is, how to store it, how to serve it, all that kind of fun information. It's all right there on these cards, which is great for me because I don't know a lot about wine. We got ourselves uh, Dead Stars and Black Holes. Let's try this. Is this usable? You'll get your Dead Stars and Black Holes and you'll pour it straight into the glass. And that is actually a scientific pour. That is about maximizing aeration. Let's find out what Dead Stars and Black Holes is like. That is a crisp, light, fresh tasting red. I like that. I like that quite a bit. Now that I've had my Dead Stars and Black Holes, I'm gonna hop into my account on Bright Cells and let them know what I thought about it. And they will use that information to further tailor my selections in my personal wine curation that they've got going for me. And next time they send me wine, they're gonna take that into account and my picks will be even better. And so far, I mean, they really haven't sent me anything I don't like, honestly. Meredith, tell them what they've won. Bright Sellers is giving Greg's followers 50% off the first six bottle box. That's six bottles for just $53. You couldn't see my lips moving at all, could you? Use the link in the pin comment below and take the quiz to order your first box today from Bright Sellers. Thank you for letting me interrupt this episode. And now back to the show. Okay, next. It's like in a Pilsner. Oh no, that's that champagne flute that we got from the burned down house. It's red and bubbling. What could it be? What could it be now? Love men at work. A little bit of bitter, a little bit of cherry. I can get those flavors out of there. There's cherry and some kind of bitter. The bitter in the color reminds me of a Negroni. I would not be shocked if this was attempting to be some kind of a Negroni. I don't think it would be labeled a Negroni. Oh, wait. This is a Campari Spritz, or something very similar to that. What is it? Oh, an Aperol Spritz. Okay, yeah, sorry. But it was imported by Campari, so it is a Campari Spritz. It's just an Aperol Campari Spritz. Is it Aperol? Aperol. Aperol. What is it? I don't know. I have people from other countries saying, like, what's he talking about when he says April? As in the country. As in the month. The nation of April? This is a great bottled spritz. I mean, I recognize it as a spritz. Tastes like a spritz. Bubbles like a spritz. Tastes, it's a spritz. It's a good spritz. It's good. Next beverage, please. Oh, okay. What do we got here? Mm. Eh. That has a smoky kind of nose that reminds me of some kind of mezcal, maybe? But I don't, I don't think I'm going to find mezcal in here when I sip it, though. I got no idea. I mean, it tastes like... Some kind of lemonade with eh, like fusel oil type stuff going on in it. I, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't immediately jump out at me as being anything. What is this? It's a daiquiri? Oh, it's a Hemingway daiquiri? No, nah, I gotta say, this doesn't, I like this. This doesn't present as a Hemingway daiquiri at all. So they're selling it's silver and West Indy rums, Italian maraschino, sim lime juice, and cane simple. I always make Hemingways with grapefruit. Isn't a Hemingway daiquiri supposed to be made with grapefruit? I'm almost certain it is. Like that's a thing, right? Am I crazy? Or was I just drinking grapefruit Hemingway daiquiris? I don't remember. You know what that, <laughs> it's funky rum. And that's what was like that fusel oil type flavor. So yeah, Man, I'm not on my game today. I mean, it's a real cocktail. Like, I don't know personally if this is a good representation of a Hemingway daiquiri. Knowing it is a daiquiri though, I do detect that. I do get it as a daiquiri. I don't taste the maraschino here at all. I think if you shook this with ice, it'd be a hell of a lot better. It's an okay daiquiri. It's not a Hemingway. Next. Hey bird. How you doing, bird? What have we got here? Okay, this is stemware with ice in it again. Meredith. What are you doing, Meredith? What are you putting ice cubes in the stemware for? This is sour glass with an ice cube in it. This drink is yellowish clear. Strong lime nose. Weak. This, this smells more than it tastes. Oh. I don't know what this product is, but I think this is made by Fling. And I know that because it has a flavor profile shockingly similar to a fling Mai Tai that I had a long time ago. 
I nailed it. No, it's the can my it is the fling my tie. <laughs> Look at that. Feel pretty good about that. So the thing about this is that it does not taste like a Mai Tai. It just doesn't. It's like a Mai Tai inspired drink. It's not a Mai Tai. There's like this weird sweet kind of floral note in there that I almost wish they accentuated more. It would make it even less like a Mai Tai. I think it's their attempt at like um, replicating the almondiness of an orgeat. It's almost like a pastiche of like surf culture. It tastes like the smell of sex wax, like from your, from your surfboard. Hey man, I kind of like it. <laughs> But don't taste like a Mai Tai. This is actually in a Mai Tai glass. What is this? Bring this in. That's a glass of dark milk. Just on the visual, I gotta guess that this is a white Russian. Let's see. It is a white Russian. It's good. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's quality. That's a good white Russian. A lot more vanilla here than you might find in your own make of a white Russian. But like, it's a pleasant surprise. I mean, it, it's sort of like the melding of a vanilla milkshake and a white Russian. What brand is this? Cutwater. Whoa, 14%. Yo! <laughs> this is the Cutwater White Russian at 14%. White Russian with Cutwater vodka and coffee cream liqueur. Yeah, delicious. Take it away from me before I pass out. Holy shit. Uh, what's the next drink? We put it in a julep cup. So you can't see this, but I can. This is a carbonated drink. It's bubbly and it is kind of limey in color. That that whitish yellow straw. What is it? Well, ginger for sure. It's not as strong a ginger flavor as you would like. It's some kind of a mule. What is this? Well, this is the Cayman Jack Moscow Mule. It's got a picture of a Cayman on it. It's got a picture of some lime, mint, and ginger. And that's all you need to know. I feel like this should be in the impulse aisle at Ron John Surf Shop. I don't know why. It's something about the branding and the flavor profile and all of it. it just feels like it's got this kind of Myrtle Beach vibe. It's got that going on with it. But um, not bad, eminently drinkable, but not a good mule. I mean, I want more poof from my ginger. All right, here comes the next drink on what the fuck am I drinking? It looks like a whiskey highball. Well, no, it looks like, it looks like a rum and Coke. It looks like Coca-Cola. I don't know what that smells like. I don't like it. I do think that this is an attempt at a rum and coke, or maybe a whiskey and coke, but without licensing Coca-Cola. So it's just like nondescript cola. Ah, I'm not into it. I don't like it. What the fuck is this? What am I drinking? This is a Cutwater Long Island iced tea? No. No. <laughs> not a Long Island iced tea. I mean, if you're drinking Long Island iced teas, you've already given up. You don't care. What do they use? What do they call it? They say, Long Island iced tea with cut water, vodka, rum, gin, and tequila. 13 by 2% alcohol. The one you'll remember. You're not gonna remember this drink. You are drinking this drink until you remember nothing. What we got here? We're gonna put this in a, ooh, 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 that's a martini? Now this cocktail, it's got legs and it knows how to use them. Now for you youngsters out there, that was a little ZZ Top reference. I'm KZ Kasem. Oh, it is a martini. Oh God. Uh, that's a martini and I hate it. That is a filthy scumbag, dirty martini. Somebody dumped a bottle of brine in that. Jesus, ugh. I don't understand it. People are like, get that vermouth away from my martini, but put a bunch of olive oil in it. What is up with you? That olive brine is disgusting. Good vermouth is great. What is this? I, it is a dirty martini. This one wins. This piece of shit drink, I got it right. It's a filthy martini. And I know I don't like a dirty martini, and the proof is in the pudding. You put a dirty martini in my hand and I said, what is, it? what is this, a martini? It is, it's a dirty martini, I don't like it. Get the olive brine out of your martini. Put a little more vermouth in there, a little dash of orange bitters, a twist of lemon and you're in Dorothy Parker town. If you really wanted a dirty martini and you wanted it to come from a bottle and you didn't want to make it yourself, Hoobalin, Hoobalin, Hoobalin's got you covered. What do we got? A dainty drink. A dainty drink in a vintage glass, a little bit of frothy head. I mean, it looks like a canned version of a Clover Club, but I know that that is not what it is. Oh my God, what does that smell? Cherry perfume. And I mean like, it smells like cherry perfume, like something that was cooked up in a parfumery. Oh, it's like drinking grandma's soap. Let's give it a try. Here, Greg, eat this soap. Oh, ugh. 
Yeah. Pine needles and cherry. I think this is some laboratory technician's attempt at some kind of a sour cherry gin thing. And I'm basing that on the presence of pine flavors and the uh, presence of an abundant cherry perfume. But it is not a sour cherry gin anything. But I bet that's what it says on the can somewhere. Bring it in. I'm very impressed. I've, I've impressed the lady. What do we got here? It is an empirical can number two. Uh, sour cherry, black currant buds, young pine cones, and walnut wood. What the shit? <laughs> you fed me walnut wood? I don't think, I think that's poisonous. <laughs> sour cherry, black currant buds, which I never would have picked out. I have no idea what a black currant bud tastes like. Young pine cones, nailed it, but I thought they were going for artificial gin. Walnut wood. My bar is made of walnut. I've never occurred to me to go down in there and start chewing on it. Chemum black tea. I do think that the chemum is the preferred leaf. I'm a chemum man. Macaw pepper. No fucking clue what that is. Water. Felt necessary to list that one. Okay. Kombucha mother. You fed me that? Sugar and carbon dioxide. Well, look, I mean, it goes without saying I don't like this, but... It is all of those things. I mean, that is a, I can do no better. That is the most accurate description of this I could imagine. The end result is, yeah, I'm not into it. Next, please. Bring on the next drink. It's pink. It's delicately pink. It smells limey, tart. It's very sweet, pretty drinkable. I mean, that tastes like a pink lemonade. I mean, it looks like a pink. It, it looks like pink, it tastes like lemonade. Therefore, it tastes like pink lemonade. It's pink lemonade. I got no sense of what the alcoholic component is here at all. None. So probably vodka. Pink lemonade vodka. By process of elimination, I would say some kind of pink lemonade vodka. Oh, shit. Bring me the glass. Bring me the can. Oh, a Cosmo. No, man. I would never call that a Cosmo. No, why not? A Cosmo tastes like cranberry. A premium vodka, triple sec, elderberry extract. Ooh. And natural flavors colored with vegetable juice. So this is from the On The Rocks brand. I don't know what's going on there. There seems to be like a wild range in the quality of their products, right? Like some of this, like their old fashioned was, oh man, bad. But this, whatever it is, they want to call it a Cosmo. Uh, it's not going to taste like a Cosmo. Um, it tastes like pink lemonade with vodka thrown into it. I think the person who buys this wants a Cosmo. I don't think anybody's buying this. But I think that the person who might buy this wants a Cosmo. They don't know this isn't a Cosmo. Yeah, let's bring on the next whatever the fuck it is. Meredith has put it in a glass that suggests to me that it's attempting to be a Manhattan. Oh, oh my God, yes. The, the smells like a bourbon a Manhattan. So this might actually be pretty good. That's a Manhattan and it's not terrible. It's a stock standard Manhattan, but I guarantee it's a Manhattan. What do we got in the can? Look at that. Hobbling! This is a Hoblane 1792 Manhattan again. Pretty good too, honestly. It's, it's pretty good Manhattan. I've had way better Manhattans, but I've also had way, way, way worse Manhattans and this requires zero effort. So I also think it's the first Hublain drink that I recognized as the drink on the label. Oh, pouring, pouring drink. a drink made by Meredith. <laughs> so this is crystal clear. I can see directly through it. This gives me like 1980s optical effects vibes. I'm digging it. It's a clear drink. What could it possibly be? It smells like it's trying to be tequila. Other than that, I can't get anything from the nose. It just tastes like tequila, lime, and seltzer. Is this like ranch water or something? What is this? What? This is supposedly a Paloma grapefruit. There's no grapefruit in there. No way. Nope, 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 nope. Um, maybe, maybe now that I'm putting that in my head, I can pick out the ghost of a grapefruit in the flavor profile. Nah, though. I mean, like, I want this thing to taste like grapefruit, grapefruit, like fruity, pulpy grapefruit. This is not there. Fails as a grapefruit Paloma. Succeeds as a tequila soda, but they're kind of different things. Hit me with your best shot. Go on and hit me with your best shot. I don't know what this is. Meredith wants me to think it's a margarita. She put it in a margarita glass, but also she's struggling back there to find glassware. So who knows what she wants. This is minty as hell. This smells like Five chewing gum. Double mint. Yeah. You know what that flavor tastes like? Is it Clorets? Is Clorets the, the gum that's got the little pocket of juice inside of it? I think it's the Clorets. Or maybe it's called Squirts or something like that. My great uncle Earl always had those. He was a veteran of both World War I and World War II. 
Fucking Earl was old, buddy. But uh, he always had those, and he liked me. He called me Young Gregory. <laughs> Apparently, no one else in the family could get along with him except for me. I inherited all of his Hawaiian shirts when he died. I think that maybe this is a mojito, an attempt at a mojito. Uh, what is this drink? It's a Bacardi mojito. I nailed it. Yeah, it is trying to be a mojito. This is really minty, but it doesn't taste like you took mint and made a mint syrup or did anything with real mint. If you take mint and make a syrup, it will turn skunky and there's like weird flavors that happen with it. But the thing is, when you're gonna can a mojito, you're just gonna do for mint what they do in chewing gum. And that's what they did here. You know, if you're gonna crack a can open and drink it right from the can, which is what you're supposed to do here. Yeah, sure. Without the dilution of the ice, like I definitely recognize that as mojito enough. Not the worst mojito. What in the hell is this? Now you're just fucking with me. We got a giant pink something. Oh, God damn it. Spilling all over my bar that I just resurfaced. I just resurfaced this bar. <laughs> this is First Wives Club huge. I know that flavor. I'm having a hard time placing it at the moment. What is that flavor? Honestly, it tastes like artificial pear, but I feel like I recognize that as being used for something else in like soft drinks. And I would bet that it's strawberry. I would bet that this is some kind of a strawberry margarita because the idea that it's a lychee or a pear margarita, just like process of elimination, like that's not gonna sell. You're gonna sell a strawberry margarita. Bring me the can. It's a Bahama Mama. This is a Bacardi Bahama Mama. Well, I don't know what's in a Bahama Mama. I would not have ever guessed that. Real rum, real ingredients. Island flavor. So saith the copywriter. I don't think I've ever had a Bahama Mama and I'm not ashamed of that. I don't. I'm not gonna claim to you to have had every drink known to man. I'll grant you the coconut rum. I'll grant you the Malibu. Pineapple, orange juice, grenadine, certainly not, but I mean, that's probably just there for the color. I don't know, maybe this does taste like a Bahama Mama. Bahama Mama, Bahama Mama, Bahama Mama. I guess it might taste what I imagine a Bahama Mama. Wow, Bahama Mama is really hard to say when you can't feel your lips. It's a better Bahama Mama, knowing nothing about Bahama Mamas, than it is a strawberry or watermelon margarita. And I'll leave it at that. So today we took a bunch of cans of cocktails and I got served them not knowing what they were. And I guessed at what they were. And I think sometimes I was right, but a lot of times I was wrong. And sometimes the drinks were wrong. Somebody was wrong. And sometimes it was my fault and sometimes it wasn't. Okay, next time on How to Drink, Finding Forgiveness. Thank you so much for watching. Do the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, whatever. I don't give a shit. Um, and then uh, look at these other episodes of How to Drink that uh, exist because I've been making this show for a very long time. The number of uh, years of my life that I have sunk into this show, frankly, unsettling. But hey, if you like it, good for you, because there's a lot of it, and you can check it out. You can check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon with another episode of HT.